hi where weasels and welcome back to creativeverse on phoenix talons world crazyverse i just logged in so it's still loading um we are back in the obsidian tower um and i finished the roof and got started on the evil crystal. Let's see. It will be easier to just to teleport there. Yeah, I was just using this beacon to plan. I just launched the game, so it's gonna take a bit to um, load in, but actually, one trick I have realize is sometimes if you open up the map and you kind of click on these squares around here and you kind of like walk around a little bit going to like the edge of where the map is loaded and then you can see if you watch how you can see it loading on the map sometimes watching the map load is kind of a little bit faster I don't know, it encourages it to load faster, or as it's loading the map, you can see what parts are loaded. Like, if I walk all the way over to this edge... Okay, now see, it's actually loading pretty fast, considering. But back when it used to, like, I'd walk over to this edge and I could see out because the building hadn't finished loading. If you just opened up the map and then... You would see, see, I just, the whole bunch more just loaded as I opened it. So, I can, sometimes looking at an area from a different angle or something, you know. Um, it seemed a little dark now that I have a roof covering. Um, it seemed a little dark over here, so I put this. I was gonna do iron bars, like the ones downstairs, but this shape here kind of awkward to do the iron bars because like I would need to do them out here and because this is already occupied with a block and if I pull these up then you know so I can't so having like iron bars here and then do I make them go into this corner it's just it's kind of awkward and if you look all the way up there you can't even load those fireplaces are or um campfires are on you can't even load them from down here. So it really... I like the ones downstairs, because they're not too tall, and they give a nice effect, but up here it just doesn't work, and we have these fires, which work pretty good, and um, I could do other ways of doing lighting, but I'm going to tear this down and um, do something else there had a different idea, but I can't remember what it was. Different idea I was going to do for lighting. But, yeah. That was temporary, and I didn't really like how it came out. Oh, yeah. And look at the ceiling. I pulled up all those windows. And I did it from pillaring up from here and um, down on the other side of the wall. Um... So, it was a bit of, it was a huge project, but really didn't take as long as I thought it would, and without the glass there, just seeing the bottom of the hard lava, it looks so much better. So. So, if anybody needs, like, 4,000 industrial windows, they're in the bank. Well, duh, the whole reason I came down here was to teleport up there. So, I moved my... Yeah, this beacon isn't going to be here. I was just using it as a way to map some stuff out, and I'll show you the problems I'm running into downstairs with my ideas, but... um, I put my two Rockzillas that I've been keeping ever since the great Rockzilla invasion of um 
a while ago when ever since the plague of Roxilla's attacked the server, I snacked the two. I actually have a third one down there that I'm gonna do something with, but um I the whole point was to put them up here. And so I finally did. One is standing guard over there, another one is standing guard over here. But yeah, I got all the slabs placed. And um I got started on the evil crystal. Um I decided to make it out of um coal and diamond because I thought the diamond with a little bit of shine to it sort of looks crystalline um and the um coal sort of looks very like evil so like this black um corrupted evilness kind of is growing out of the top of the tower and then from that is sprouting the, the power of the crystal. I don't know. It's just, I was gonna make it out of the red glass like everything else, but then I, if I'm gonna do redo these um, tentacle things in the red glass, which definitely I redid this one and I can show you what that one looks like in a minute. It definitely looks better having them brighter um but there's a lot of this red glass everywhere and I wanted the crystal to kind of be something different and so I liked the idea of the diamond nodes with the red um but of course ores aren't as transparent so where I put the lights I also put the red glass um and I actually like that contrast between the black and the red, the coal contrasting um, with the diamonds, I mean with the um, red stained glass and at night um, it looks awesome because the red lights shine through the red glass and give a sort of reddish glow to the coal and it's just, and it's subtle but you can even see a slight pink to the, the sparkles of the diamonds. I think the diamonds are even reflecting some slight little bit of color. Like the white parts aren't quite white. They're sort of reflecting. It's it's better effect at night, but um so that's going to be the evil crystal. And I totally other than two pieces of ice which I may or may not worry about um I basically completely took down this ice spike because I didn't want it detracting from this crystal here. It just was in the way. And I don't know if this crystal is big enough. It feels like it's, it, I need to make it wider, but that's kind of hard to do. If you look at it this way, it's wide enough, but then on this side it's kind of not. and but because I'm placing a liquid and then throwing bombs at it, I really can't control the shape of it too well, other than adding a lot of extra and then going through with extractors and trimming it. But anyway, so that that's what I've gotten for now. Um, and I like the little bit of red from the tower. It kind of makes it feel like the tentacles being this red glass, the red glass that's built in, it's kind of like it's built into the structure but then it's also its own organic flowing thing. Like it is biological but then it's shaped itself into structure. The obsidian tower was already here, it was the wizard's tower, but then these tendrils that are now engulfing the tower and all of the red glass that's inside and that's crept up this stairway and then up into there. It's like the tower has been infected with the evil and it has spread all the way up the staircase and now it's, you know, um, sprouted this crystal from it, kind of like a vine sprouting a flower or something. 
you know. And I still may build up the roof a little bit, like in this section, make it like a raised section, and then do one over there, or maybe build up the sides a bit. I kind of don't really want the roof to be completely flat, but I am going to want a sort of flat area to add lots of like science-y equipment and stuff, because he's like, um, monitoring the crystal and stuff, and there's like machines and whatever, and there's power, and I might want to put a little bit of like a steampunk lab equipment here. Um, you know, like, he's using science to try and maximize the, um, crystal's power. Um, so yeah, I don't know if I, um, I showed you what this turned out to be. I decided not to do that extra, like, going out and then curling back in. Those kind of shapes are just too hard to do. I decided to just leave it like this. Maybe I'll put a fire here or something. Um, but I decided to just, um, make a core of the lights and then just, um, any place that they show, just put this. So it is a bulky design, but it's also sort of sleek because, like, the lights are built into that corner of the... But then, if you look at the way the wall is shaped, this has to, like, curl. It came down like this, and then here it had to, um, curl out this way, you know, in order to, like, maintain this shape, so. But, let's just get a look at how it looks from over in these trees. Which is kind of hard to see because once you fly all the way over here, render distance is an issue, but since it's mostly going to be seen from far away, yeah, I like that. I mean, it's a little bit bulky, but you got to realize you're looking at it from an angle, so it won't seem so overpowering when you see it straight on. But if I do that on the other side, and then I do it sort of, because from this angle, the tower looks square, even though it's not really. So I could do it on, like, the four imaginary corners that you see from this angle, and then do a few extra places in the back. But I'm going to definitely do less of them than my other design, because they're bigger in nature, but I really like the way it's lit up. Even in the daytime, you can kind of see that. So, I'm going to try to, um, quickly, um, show you, um, my dilemma and ask for my dilemma. That was my mom saying, when life gives you dilemmas, you make a lemonade. Now I say that all the time. But I'll show you my confusion down here, and then we can, um, hopefully, if I do this quickly enough, get back up there to show you how it looks at night. Um, so I have this. See, I have all of that wasted space above the bedroom. I kind of wanted his bedroom to be, like, the top room, because he's, like, the ruler, and he sh his, you know, massive chamber should be above, you know, because he's... Because height is power in this storyline, and so he's trying to... His power would be way up on top or something. You know, it wouldn't make sense to have the factory above the, you know, master suite. But, um, I've definitely decided that I do want to totally clear out my base that I have over in the jungle and live in the tower permanently. But if you can see the way I've designed it, I have all of this wasted space here that I don't really know what to do with. So I was thinking of moving the throne room and the kitchen and kind of putting the factory behind it and only accessing it from below. Because if you go down here, I was thinking of putting the factory down here, but then I remembered that this area is really kind of small. Um, 
yeah, I just put this here so I could get an idea of where this wall was up there and how far this way I can go before I break through the mountain. But this area here was originally going to be a dungeon slash slave quarters that was going to have a bunch of, like, prison cells and, like, barracks and be the really nasty, you know, cramped and dark and, you know, evil place that he makes his servants sleep. I mean, maybe the wizard wouldn't necessarily be that cruel, but, I mean, now the demon is like, oh, I possessed a guy that has, you know, thousands of people working for him. You know, I'm gonna have fun with this, you know, so. Maybe this was just, you know, a, not necessarily like a dungeon, but more of like a military barracks that was for like temporarily housing a lot of people in a short area, but it wasn't necessarily, you know, supposed to be jam packed with a thousand people in a, you know, it was just like a little, or even like a bomb shelter type thing. It was just not. Maybe not necessarily meant for this purpose, but then once the demon moves in, you know, all the slaves get moved down here to... But then I also wanted a factory. If I'm gonna move everything from over there. Now see, this is where I run into form versus function. I want a nice big, a bigger crafting area than what I have up there. Like have a couple processors and some storage up there just because that's convenient for me to access um or maybe move that down because he wouldn't really have that in his bedroom he'd have his own personal storage in his bedroom but maybe more on the same level as the lab and the um potion room like if maybe on the second floor where there's... Oh, I hear a thing. Cool. Um, maybe over here there's some room for a factory. You know, it would make more sense to have storage and processing next to the lab and the hell portal because why... because then you could put a door on this level up here that he could lock because if you come up to here you're immediately in the bathroom now I can either wall this off as a bathroom or um what but if this is like his personal master suite I should take all I should leave this here but have it just for his own personal storage and only have one or two processors and put like a couch and like, you know, a f one of those medieval fireplaces, um, you know, and put a bunch of like, personal stuff here and make this be the master suite and only the master suite and then, um, you know, have like a door here so like, if he wanted to, he could, um, you know, lock this floor completely because this is like his open floor plan bedroom slash bathroom or just put a door here or something like have somehow make this just like a private room and then have like the room but see the thing is I definitely want to have a giant sweatshop style factory where the demon is like mass producing his evil or whatever so do I do that down below where the barracks is like dig out a whole nother chamber or do I somehow put it here where there's all of this wasted space do I put another floor um but if I do that then I would have to move everything I have here up a level um so that then I have room for another level downstairs where, um, oh, he must have climbed up the front, eh, whatever, um, 
you know, because I don't really want, like, it wouldn't make sense to have this level and all of a sudden the next level up is a factory. You know. So... Um, but, like, this, having it all like this really isn't as easy to use. And I was thinking if I put it down in that other room, I could have, like, a boiler room that's all, like, lava and furnace blocks and all evil-looking, and then I could have, and then I could use the industrial blocks to really make it look like a factory. You know, like, this is a medieval castle, but then a modern industrial factory is hidden off um, in the back. Like, even if the wizard maybe, you know, like, the wizard had his own secret factory where maybe he wasn't, you know, hidden underground where maybe he wasn't being, you know, the best with like his practices so it would be his secret factory that he would have hit underground and now you know it went from this little like a shady practice that he's hiding to like now you know with the demon possessing him he's becoming more of like a slave driver and really not mistreating the workers but even before it was like not exactly wanting people to find out, you know, that there's this whole operation going on here. You know, maybe, maybe if the wizard, um, summoned the demon because he was trying to reclaim his, his, um, birthright and the power that was owed to him as the storyline I wrote, then maybe he was kind of massing an army or preparing for something, so... He had the factory, but now the demon is just doing nothing but producing whatever evil he's producing. I don't know if that makes any sense. But, um, so my problem is, where do I put it? I was kind of thinking I had to clear out the walls, but, okay, I can put it down in the basement, and that would be cool from a storyline perspective, but would it really be a convenient place where I have, you know, my my 600 pros or my 20 processors and 20 forges you know and my giant wall of storage where I can just you know craft anything I need you know this here would wouldn't really work for a crafting room so I was thinking I could like go here and then I could like go up a bit and I was thinking if I um If I raise, if I moved all of this stuff over here, because I want, when you come in this door, I want it to be this grand entrance with this throne room and dining hall and to have the kitchen, which I was kind of, um, um, planning out, like, take this kitchen here and move it up here and then like somehow move the dining room and the throne room all over here where I have all of this wasted space I'm not using and then just make a wall like here that goes across and then this would be the factory back here but um it would be, like, only accessed from down below where you would step up some stairs and have this open chamber. Um, that would, because the barracks where they would sleep, I wanted to be cramped and dark and evil, but then I would want the factory to have a little bit more room. But then that would be great if I did make this giant factory. But then, how convenient is it going to be for me to climb down some convoluted path to get there? I mean, I guess I could use teleporters, but, you know, because if I am going to be living here, I want the build to be both accurate to the storyline and also usable. So, um, oh yeah, um, I should 
show you the hot feet climbing down the stairs because they still spawn despite the glass slabs reminded me that I should show you um, this while it's still night it's already two in the morning <laughs> Yeah, see how if you come over here, yeah, worms spawn up here and stuff. But they spawn a lot less with the glass. And this guy here, because there's no glass there, because I glassed around, sometimes you actually get, for some reason, corruption level chests spawn there. Which uh, you would expect lava layer chest but they're corruption chest for some reason and things spawn up here so anyway confusing but it's a bonus get free stuff so I don't care um and if anybody wants to use this as a chest spawner they can come up here um well I don't know I think I claimed the area but um to pull up some of the slabs let some stuff spawn as long as you put the glass back when you're done. Like you can use this as a spawner. But I mean, you could also go through the portal. That would be even easier. Um, and yeah, feel free to kill all the worms you want up here. Because they're a plague. So you see what I'm saying? The, the red lighting actually does sort of shine through the diamond. And the way it, it kind of makes the coal a little bit red but then you have a little bit of contrast down here where like there's the shadow to it because there's not as much red light there anyway I don't know why it kind of does seem like there's a sharp um, why is it not shining below? Oh, it's probably the way the lamps are rotated. The bottoms of the lamps don't produce light, so the light's not shining down. But I can, I can deal with that. Fix it somehow. But anyway, you see what I'm saying? That, And I did put some red lights, actually, in the floor, too. Um, to make this glass glow a bit. And I like the way the red lights sort of light up the hardened lava, because that's a little bit transparent. And then, of course, the glass diffuses the light a little bit, which is good. It's like that kind of fiber optic effect. But, yeah. It looks completely different at night, so I just wanted to show that. So, yeah, this is probably a really long video, and I've done nothing but ramble. But basically, I definitely want to live permanently in the castle. But, um, I need some suggestions for how I should rearrange things to have room for everything. Because if I have to move everything up a floor, like, I'd be willing to do that. It's just gonna be a monumental project, because I'm gonna have to build a couple more floors to the tower, and then I'm gonna move everything. But the bottom towers have such wasted space. You know, so... I kind of want this to be the top floor, and kind of like, nobody goes past a certain point on the staircase except, you know. Because that would make sense. Anybody who needs to access the staircase to, the staircase to go between levels can but then at a certain point, you know, the only person that's allowed to have access to the crystal and its, you know, magic is the, the um, demon wizard and the only person allowed in his personal master suite would be him, so I believe this is the top level and then you have the roof of the crystal. I don't know if that makes sense, but um... 
Because he, he wouldn't let any of his workers know what's actually going on. You know. So. And he wouldn't let any of them in his private laboratory with any of, like, his experiments or over in, like, his potion room where he's conjuring evil magic. So, I'm thinking I have to take all of this and the kitchen, which I hated the kitchen anyway because if you look at the way it is, it's really not much space and it's not very... You would have a large kitchen where people mass produce food for the for all the um uh slaves that he keeps because you know he from i mean they're not going to get the best food because he is evil and he enjoys them suffering but they are but they're not going to be but he's also very practical and they perform better when supplied with nutrition, so of course he's gonna, you know, keep them well fed and powerful so that they can be his soldiers or so they can be productive in the factories. I mean, he's got a- he's probably got enough people that, like, resist him to, like, torture and take out his evilness on, that he probably doesn't need to be evil to the people who are loyal and actually following him, you know? I mean, of course, he's not the most pleasant person to work for, but I'm sure that if they're- if they're benefiting him in some way, then I'm sure he's gonna keep them around and he's gonna- treat them better than, you know, but then anybody who dares to oppose his evil. Sounds like a coup. Um, ooh, then he just has fun with them, but, <laughs> but then whenever things don't go his way, he always has the endless supply of goat minions to take his rage out on, so. There is that, but yeah, I'm, I totally want to redo this. Um, anyway, I just don't like the way there's no space. I want to, like, <coughs> oh, excuse me, I have room to put a sink and counter space and really make it look like a professional kitchen because, I mean, some somebody's going to cook all of the, like, good food that he likes to eat, you know, because... Someone's gonna cook his evil corrupt cheese sandwiches or whatever. So, um, any suggestions would be helpful. And also, I was thinking of possibly doing some live streaming um, on this channel. I downloaded some software that would let me do that, so... Um, but I'm kind of a little bit afraid of even if I did announce it and make it this big deal nobody's really gonna tune in because I just I'm not that big yet I don't have a lot of views so if I'm live um and nobody's there to like comment or watch or care I mean yeah there's always the VODs but it's just like it might be like pointless at such an early stage so if live streaming is something you would be interested in seeing from me, you can comment, and then I'll know that there's a point. But for something like the day that I actually do move into here, and it's like a three-hour process of just emptying chests and stuff, maybe that might be um, kind of boring, but we could talk and brainstorm ideas and whatever so it might make a better stream um and um 
those serious Sam games that I um, started playing, I could live stream some of that because that's the type of game where I can play it for six or eight hours and not even realize that time is passing. I get so into it. So, I guess I don't really have much to show. Just that the roof is finally finished after all these months of procrastinating it. Um. So, yeah. Suggestions about how I could do things. And I was also thinking I could try to go below the barracks level. Like, kind of what's back here behind this wall. But, I mean, that is the corrupt pit back there, so... If I try to, um, build another floor, I don't know if the walls down there are so corrupt that there might be, um, a lot of corruption, and I don't want to be dying every time I try to use my own factory as a crafting room. You know, because there's so much, like, this is definitely barracks jail cell, it's already set up to be that. Definitely, um, I don't, but if I go even further down, We get into this, where it's like my mob traps and stuff, and it's all corrupt, so I can't really go any lower. But I guess if I cleared out- I guess this wall isn't too corrupt, I guess if I- Because you can see here that like the corruption sort of ends here, so I guess I could- clear out more of this if I'm if I know where this leads maybe I could um, do half of that floor being the um, barracks and then like over here have an extra but I do have to be careful I don't punch through the other side of the mountain but I guess I could widen that I could terraform the mountain if I absolutely had to but it just now that they changed how corruption works and it affects you much faster, you know, this area really is quite dangerous. But then I could always put some healing beacons down here or throw some purification bombs. I don't have to leave the whole area as corrupt as, um, I had it. And since I got the Hell Portal working better, I don't really need as much Corruption Spawner down there as I used to. But having the, um, the big pit over here corrupt, you know, even though you don't really go down there, just having having this area corrupt. I guess you can see that it's corrupt from here. I forgot. Those eyes really are kind of disturbing. Yeah, but the lighting. There's too much lighting down there now. When you can't see the rocks and you just see yeah, it's too bright down there now. I have to work on the lighting. Oh, wait a minute, that's why it's too bright. Because I had my light on still. Oh, there's a goat down there. Must have been one of these guys. That fell off his spike. But yeah, I like the way the pipes... You can actually have it look like it's coming out of the pipe. Anyway. Okay. 
enough mindless rambling. <clears throat> well, yeah, I can never get over how awesome the hidden temple look with blue lights. How it does that black light effect. That is really cool. Okay. Um, so yeah. Enough rambling. Just basically talking out loud, brainstorming. Um, so yeah, if it's a while before I do any more creative verse videos, at least you'll know why, because I'm trying to figure things out and get a plan before I start. But I will make a big event and possibly live stream moving day when I finally do tear down the old base and move here. So, yeah. Anyway, for now, um, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.